<clears throat> Here's one way to tell that I love my outfit. I'm wearing it in the video before and I'm wearing it in this one because when I tell you I am a full-on cosy fest at the moment, I mean it. I'm genuinely like the coziest of the cosy, but I feel so lovely. And this is when I know that I'm getting to a point in my wardrobe. Well, I feel like I'm there. I feel like I've achieved it. I'm now just, if I see something lovely and I feel like there's a space in my wardrobe, 110% like introduce it. But I know what it is that I'm looking for. I'm looking for quality. I'm looking for fab beautiful fabrics. I'm looking for brand heritage a lot of the time as well. Like I really love to know the story of, of a brand and um, to understand the history and the craftsmanship. And it is very much a passion for me in that, in that sense. But a lot has changed over the years anyway. In this video, I thought I'd do it a little bit differently because I'm spending the day in my dressing room today. And there's a few things that I have been asked a lot about. I also thought we could go through my current handbag collection, which is not something I have done for two years but I thought um, considering I'm at this stage where I feel like I've got a really good well-rounded bag collection that I have edited down from 50 over 50 designer handbags and a constant need for more and new and I feel in such a good place with it and I genuinely feel like I've got something to bring to the fashion table that I'm really passionate about. I think that's what's important for me is that um, when I'm talking to you about something, there's real passion and worth there. You, you can't sit there and talk about things that you're not passionate about. You just can't do it. You've got one life and this journey that I've been on has been an interesting one and I talked about like my style changes and things like that in my book Evergreen. Cheeky plug, always, but it's the proudest thing I've ever done and I will shout that book and every achievement that comes with it from the rooftops because there's one thing that I've learned in life is nobody is going to do it for you and so you can bet your bottom dollar that if I've worked on something and I've achieved it, you are going to hear about it. No one's gonna do it for me, ever. I can't rely on anyone else, it's always gonna be me. And I hope that if there's one lesson that you take from this very bizarre video that I'm about to make with you, it's that if you achieve something and you are wanting others to acknowledge it for you, please don't, please don't wait for that, please, let the world know that you've achieved something, whether that's getting the grade on your exam, whether it's passing your driving test, whether it's buying your first home. I feel like we've got really, really coy about sharing the things that we achieve for fear of upsetting other people. Well, I want you to know, and this is something I will always say, is that if you've achieved something, whether it's this year, last year, the last week, whenever, or you've never felt like you've been able to celebrate it, on my channel, in my comments section, I will always want to hear it. Even if you think it's random, if I've not said this in a video and I've not said, let me know what you've achieved recently, just drop it in the comments please, because I will be the one person that is like, I am so proud of you. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is with this world that we're in at the moment. Let me know if it's just British people, but if you've achieved something, honestly, I want to know about it. I want to hear it. I want to I want to know how you did it. I want to know your mindset. I want to know the tips that you had from doing it. I want to know what it ignited within you. I want to know everything. And I think that that is a really informative and healthy attitude to succeeding at something. So yeah, if you've succeeded in something recently, if you've achieved something, let me know. Anyway, segue into something else there. But I'm in my dressing room today. Because I've been away so much, I haven't really been spending as much time in here. I know I'm usually in here all the time. This is just where I like sit and fester most of the time. Um, and I've got a few bits of wardrobe care that I need to do. So I thought I could talk you through um, a few of those things and then obviously talk you through my um, handbag collections and show you the, the bags that have made it. The bags that are still here and the bags that have withstood the test of time. Because there's not a lot and it takes a huge amount for me to introduce something to my collection nowadays. And if you make it, I would say that it is a, uh, it's possible that you are 
certified timeless if you've made it into my wardrobe and so this is as much of a video for me to refer back to but it's also i'm hoping going to be helpful for you as well because there's a lot of like faff and a lot of noise in the fashion world and i said it a lot there is a lot of luxury fast fashion at the moment whether that's handbags shoes clothing and even i have to be like lydia keep your head like in the right frame. As a fashion lover, you're going to want to buy new things and you will buy new things, but you do not need to buy everything. And that is super important. Um, and certainly stay away from the impulse purchases because um, unless you've really gone through your checklist, you're not going to do it. Anyway, so I'm gonna talk you through my collection. I'm gonna talk you through care, care for my cashmere, care for my jewelry. Um, care for my shoes and that kind of thing. So hopefully you'll find this video a bit informative, something that you can um, touch back to, and also maybe understand a little bit more about my thought processes in terms of handbags, because handbag unboxing videos are a huge, huge deal on the internet. And that was the hardest thing for me in the beginning because I have a business to run. Just being perfectly honest with you, I have a business to run. And my Hermes unboxing videos on TikTok, on Instagram, on um, YouTube were always the biggest hitting videos for me. And um, it's very difficult that I don't really make them anymore. I am going to be talking about higher end fashion. There will be some lower end pieces in here as well. That's very much my um, vibe. I will pair a set of H&M trousers with a Connolly cardigan that cost ridiculous amounts of money. That is my style, that is how I create my wardrobe the best. I am gonna be talking to you about luxury products, I am gonna be talking to you about wardrobe care, and I am gonna be talking to you about getting the most out of those products, but there will be a spattering of, of um, more affordable pieces in there. So, without further ado, let's get into cashmere care, because I like to think of myself as a bit of a queen when it comes to cashmere. I love it. I have so many items and I've really searched high and low for brilliant cashmere pieces. And you can find brilliant, brilliant cashmere pieces on Amazon. In fact, I did a bulk order of my favorite socks, which are actually from Amazon. These are um, the Cashmere West Coast Knitwear socks and I get them in this sort of blushed ivory color. These are not fully cashmere. These have been probably the best cashmere socks that I have ever owned. These are cashmere socks that you are able to wear like properly. I've never got a hole in these, whereas every other cashmere set I have, so they, they could well be, ah, here we go, here's the blend. 10% cashmere, um, and then 50% super fine wool fibers, and then 40% other fibers, interesting, however, these are functional as well as um, soft, so they're not the softest of, of the soft, but my goodness me, do these keep my feet warm. And they go with a lot of my cashmere pieces, so I, I just bloom and love these when I did an order. So these are from Amazon, they're about 30 quid a pair. Um, great for this time of year, great for lounging, keeping your tootsies warm, and an affordable one. But the thing with owning cashmere is, you have to take care of it. That's washing and that's debobbling and that's hanging and folding and washing and blah, 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 and drying and blah, blah, blah. And so I thought I could talk you through um, a bit of that as she stands here in the most cozy cashmere outfit ever. All of this works for my wool items as well. So let's dig in. As mentioned, I have been doing some debobbling and I debobbled my Lily Silk cashmere set yesterday. And it is one of those jobs that is so satisfying and having a good debobbler is key to having good knitwear and good cashmere and good sort of loungewear. I use the Steamery debobbler. Um, I think this was sent to me by the brand. I can't actually remember. Um, I think it comes in other colors. Wouldn't have chosen pink, but we move. <laughs> and I keep this in my top drawer so that I can grab it whenever I think things are looking a little bit bobbly. This is a given when it comes to cashmere, you are going to have to do this because cashmere has such uh, soft fibers, wools, etc. it starts to pill, but it does give it an entirely new lease of life once um, you do it. So I thought I could go with my Lauren Manoogian cardigan because I love this. This is a great match for my Lily Silk two-piece and um, it kind of acts like a dressing gown, but it's 
that really lovely marl um beige that just looks so so gorgeous i got this from netta porte like a hundred years ago and lauren manugian is one of my favorite brands and um it does need a bit of a deep bobble so i thought we could do it together this doesn't hold a lot of fibers but it does um do the trick so i do have to to empty it fairly regularly and make sure that it's charged i've got a charger but you just turn it on like this and you just basically shave very delicately it doesn't pull or anything like that it's designed really well and it just gets all of those stray fibers the funniest thing about this coat is i wore it in the garden yesterday to go and collect the eggs and i've got straw all over it so it's a good opportunity for me to pick all of that off and remind myself never to wear my nice things to the chicken coop ever again so this is the debobbled pocket so looking a lot smoother and as you can see there is a lot more fibers hanging off of this pocket and it just gives it an entirely new look so i'm going to do the entire garment and um anything else that gets in my way for a quick refresh the arms usually are the worst that is usually a dead giveaway that you are due a debobble As you would have heard, the motor then started to struggle a bit and you just twist this section off. Now this takes a bit of work because it does collect quite a thick amount, but it's not huge amounts and it's a bit fiddly. I'm not gonna lie. I wish it did a bit more. Need like an industrial size debobbler. It's really stuck in there. You can see it's got these little blades popped on. is to stop the blades from pulling the fabric and then this is just an extra stopper <laughs> especially working on the edges really brings it back to life as well no, nothing looks worse than little bobbles of fabric hanging off of hem giving it a little bit of a once over. However, I have noticed some sad times. <laughs> All of my knitwear, by the way, it smells of wood smoke because our house, um, I always make it smell of wood, wood smoke. However, when I have hit my fireplace with my shoulder, you get these black marks. And because I'm always wearing this when I'm at my coziest, you know I'm wearing it when the fire is lit. So that gives that away. But um, that, I've, the other thing I've noticed is on this arm that I haven't debobbled. It looks as though we've got a little munching moth, which is definitely something I will come to. But I will link the um, steamery down below. I just think having one of these to hand, if you like softer yarns and things like that, is really really helpful. So I'll link it down below. So following the moth munching discovery, this was something that I discovered um, when I was looking for stocking fillers for Ali from a company called. Campbell's of Bewley, which is a Scottish brand. Um, and this is the Total Wardrobe Care Natural Linen Spray Cedarwood Blend. Now they had this as a, um, as a, a moth spray. So this is to protect against moths. However, um, a friend of mine who owns a clothing brand did recently tell me that um, the best way to prevent against any kind of like moths that are gonna get into your fabrics is to wash every item if it's wool. Um, as soon as you get it, whether you've ordered it online, whether you've bought it, you will be washing away any of the bugs that might be in the fabrics. We've not been doing that. So at the moment, I'm gonna try this and just do that moving forward. My husband is on a crusade against the moths at the moment and um, I'm trying to help. So this is the Total Wardrobe Care Natural Linen Spray. I haven't used this yet. Oh, it smells lovely, very lemony. Yeah, that is lovely. I'd like for my wardrobe to smell like that, so I'm very happy with that. The other thing you're gonna to want to have in your wardrobe is a good steamer, especially when it comes to knitwear and cashmere. I just don't think that cashmere looks very good ironed, 
I think it gives it a bit of a flat look, doesn't really do much either because you don't want it to get too hot because the fibres are so delicate, etc, etc. So I always opt for a steam. Generally, I very, very rarely um, iron anything and that's usually because I'm, <laughs> I'm not really an ironer. I do steam most of my outfits that I'm going to wear because it, this is here, it's convenient and it always gives the best finish. The steamer that I have is the Steamery steamer and it's their more like industrial one. I had a um, steamer before and it literally drove me spare. It was so badly designed. This is on wheels so it's perfect for keeping in a cupboard and wheeling out. It is also very very effective. It's got a good amount of steam, holds a good amount of water and it just works really really well so i would highly recommend this i ordered it on amazon this is not sponsored by steamery i wish it was because i honestly think their stuff is so so good so for something like steaming you are going to have to hang your knitwear however i would say you do not want to be hanging your knitwear in an ideal world however if you are likely to never wear your knitwear because it is hung i can understand why you would want to do that i did that for a long period of time um and i didn't wear any of it more or less so i just put it and folded it into cupboards because it meant that my favorite pieces lasted a lot longer. However, if you are steaming, you are going to need to hang it for a short period of time. And I would say that if you are going to hang your knitwear, you're gonna to want to do so on the best possible hangers. I used to have these god awful velvet hangers and not only were they so ugly, like honestly so ugly, but they did no favors for my knitwear. They were so skinny and pindly and awful. As much as I would love fully shouldered hangers in all my wardrobe, it is not possible. They take up so, so much space. So I had to find that happy medium and these have been really good. These work really well at holding them a little bit more sturdy and also keeping a good amount of space. So steaming, not hanging, using a good steamer and using good hangers as well. You don't always have to spend a fortune. You might have to spend more than the plastic ones, but these, Hangers, they're all from Amazon. They're not the most expensive of all of the hangers, but they do the job. I just want to find that more mid-tier um, approach to my wardrobe and the wardrobe care that I'm using. However, I do appreciate that not everyone is gonna do this because I am neurotic. The good thing about steaming is it gives my clothes a nice little refresh as well because I try not to wash my stuff unnecessarily, only if it really needs it, and that's probably gonna give some people the ick, but um, I'm not a particularly sweaty person, first and foremost, but also um, I really want to maintain my clothes for as long as possible, so unnecessary washing is not um, on the cards here, unfortunately. So this gives it a nice refresh, I think, and also gets any creases out where it's been stored or folded. I always think it looks so much more crisp once it's had a good steam. The next important thing to discuss is washing. And this is probably one of the most common questions that I get asked about all of my woolens and cashmere pieces um, whenever I talk about them. It's how I take care of them because you know I am not taking all of my cashmere pieces to be dry cleaned. I'm just not doing it. I, I, I need as much of a stress-free life as possible and having to take all of my items to the dry cleaners like that it's it's a deal breaker for me i'd rather be naked so i um i had to find a way to wash things as best as i can and you know i'm not hand washing okay i'm definitely not hand washing if i'm not ironing i'm not hand washing so i have this setting on my mila which is specifically for woolens and I use that and I use a woolen softener kind of specific. So it's like a delicate wools, silks, cashmere softener. Um, we originally started using Woolite, but I have used the Attire Care one as well. I've actually just ordered a new bottle of that. I'll pop a picture of it on screen. Woolite is just as good if you want to get something that you can just use and use and use and use and use. Then that is a really good option as well. So check if your washing machine has a setting that will do your more delicate pieces and then maybe try something in there that you don't like so much before you do it. Some of our items have been lost to our washing escapades, but that's very rare. It's worked really, really well for taking care of my cashmere. So I thought that I would 
tell you about it but the, i think the softeners are very very important they keep things nice and soft and fluffy and wonderful then once you've washed it you're obviously going to want to dry it and if there is one mistake that you do not want to make when drying your softer cashmere woolen pieces please whatever you do don't put it in the tumble dryer because you will regret it and do not hang it when it is damp because i had to have stern words with Mr. Millen Gordon not long ago because he did that with one of my cashmere dresses and it ended up being a maxi dress to the floor, pretty much a gown. Um, so what I would suggest is lying them, them flat if you've got heated floors. That is my hack. I lay them on the heated floor, obviously after the floors have been cleaned, but I lay them on our heated floor. We do so down the back of the house where the dogs can't get to and that tends to do the job keeps them nice and uh shapely don't hang them on washing lines don't hang them over chairs over doors over anything like that you're going to want to lie them flat and um keep them as like tidy as possible that is my big tip please just don't do it don't hang them especially when wet and don't put them in the tumble dryer <laughs> so those are my little um That is my little care breakdown. Now let's get into the bag collection because I feel like you're going to find this very, very interesting. Now you'll notice that I don't have my microphone on whilst we sort out whatever technical difficulties I was having. I thought it sounded great, guys. I honestly, apart from when I speak too loudly because I'm so used to throwing my voice at you so that you can hear me, that sometimes I spoke a little bit loud. I thought it sounded great. I honestly did, I'm devastated. But anyway, this is my handbag collection. 2024. First time I'm doing it in two years. So let's get into the bags. Now I have to preface this, as you know, I don't keep all of my bags here. Um, so I think a couple, two or three of my bags are off-site in storage. It teaches me how I can live more seasonally even when it comes to my wardrobe. So yeah. First up, we have my Chanel Classic Flap in the black caviar le leather. This bag is now probably, I would say, this must be about six or seven years old. Is it older than that? I don't know. I can check by going through all my content, but I think it's about six or seven years old. And it actually looks in very good nick. Um, it hasn't been worn the way that a classic flap should be worn. However, it is an icon for me and I do still wear it every now and again. Um, for me, this is the epitome of timelessness, of timeless classics. If I was to buy it again, I wouldn't buy new and I would go and I would buy a vintage one with the gold hardware, with the, I think is it um, 18 karat gold hardware? Correct me if I'm wrong. I would do that, I would get it vintage personally just because I prefer, I prefer a vintage bag wherever possible. Uh, but um, I, what I didn't know, I couldn't do, so that was that. For me, this bag doesn't hit the mark just purely because it doesn't have a top handle to it. I know nowadays they do the top handle version. Um, I need to get something that means that I can like actually use this as a top handle bag. So I know that there is some kind of way that you can do it. Next up is my Chanel pearl bag in the black caviar leather. This has definitely been worn more than the other one, and I love this so, so much. I think I bought this just before we went into to lockdown. This was probably my last bag purchase before lockdown and I do think of my life as two different lives because the person before lockdown, my gosh, I, I don't even recognize myself. I'm such a different person, it's so weird. But like, also, I feel like I should say this. This is probably not the video to say it in, but when I say that I'm a different person, that doesn't mean that I was like a knob. Do you know what I mean? I, I wasn't an idiot and I wasn't a not very nice person. I was still a really, really nice person. And I still stand by that. I was really nice. I was always very, very respectful to everyone. Um, but I, I was just different. I just didn't know a lot of things. And I'm really quite proud of myself when I say that because I feel like I've learned the things that most people are sort of nurtured through in life. My parents have been really kind of hands off. Not they're not the they're not bad parents at all, but they just they've kind of left me to my own devices. It's made me very resilient, very independent, but maybe a lot of the things that a lot of people grow up knowing, like, you know, what's important and blah blah blah. I was too busy standing on my own two feet. And so um I just want to preface that and say that it doesn't mean I was not a very nice person. I was really lovely. 
promise. I just didn't know a lot of things. And so a lot of material purchases were at the pinnacle of my um, focus. And nowadays, obviously, you know, they're not. So um, and hopefully this collection will show you that. And hopefully this collection helps just communicate that because you'll see that I've got just really lovely things that I that I really value. Uh, this was the last bag that I purchased before COVID. Um, and this is a little pearl number. I've worn this loads. It's a great evening bag. I think that when you wear it like this and the pearls just kind of fall through, I think it's gorgeous. It will all, always not be the pearl encrusted bag that I never got. And um, I'm okay with that, okay, I'm okay. I've made peace with that. <laughs> Beautiful size. Um, and I love the way the little chain runs underneath. Great classic not going anywhere one of those pieces that in like a hundred years time i'll be like gosh do you remember when we all went into lockdown that was the first bag that, that was the last bag i bought before we did that <laughs> anyway chanel and the only other bag on display in my wardrobe is and i feel like this is iconic this bag iconic in my sense by the way i'm only talking about myself which is not very iconic but this bag i feel like i can i just ugh, can I just take credit? Can I? I feel like I put this bag on the map. <laughs> There's everyone at Louis Vuitton being like, shut up. <laughs> I don't know, I could never get rid of this bag, no matter how much I've thought about doing it. Um, this is the Pochette Matisse, and there was a time in my YouTube journey where it was like, and I'm wearing my Pochette Matisse, and I'm wearing my Pochette Matisse. And actually people used to get annoyed at me for just wearing this one, so now they get annoyed at me for wearing my Hermes bags, but um, once upon a time it was this. And do you know what? I'm actually quite sad that I didn't wear this more and I wasn't a bit more like rigorous, but because I wore this bag to death and it still looks great. I like it when the, the handles discolor. I'm not one of those people that's really precious about that. I like it going that more honey colored. It shows that a bag has been loved and worn, just how I like it. One of those bags that I think is just iconic. I love that they've done it in the smaller size. Am I gonna buy it? No, because I don't wear this one. And we know that I generally wear a very small selection of bags nowadays. And this one is purely kept for the fact that I just love it. It's not really worth me selling it. And it really does nod to the very early days of my YouTube journey. So love it, love it. Comment down below if you remember those days and comment down below if you bought one. I remember when people were like, Lydia, stop talking about that bag because we can't get it. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Next up is a more mid tier bag option. This is my Fairfax and Favour Buckingham bag. And I think that this is absolutely gorgeous. I think it's such a beautifully designed bag and for its price point, I think this is one of the best bags I've seen available. This ticks every box for me. Um, I think what Fairfax and Favour have achieved with this bag is what so many brands set out to do and fail. And I don't think that they've done that at all. And I think that there's so many ways that they can go with this particular bag. As I've said in many previous videos, the grain on this bag is identical to the grain on my Hermes bag. It's got the same quality leather. It is beautiful. In fact, if I just show you quickly, not sponsored by Fairfax and Favour, by the way, but if I bring you up very, very close, you can see it's just a slightly bigger grain, but the same texture, same detail, all of the goodness. I never say anything like that in my sponsored videos because I don't want to get into trouble, but I can say what I want when I'm not working with someone and I feel like that's a good thing to nod. Two, I love a little vanity. I think the vanity is always so elegant, really great for daytime wear. It's got the top handle and this top handle, this detail, tick, 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 tick. So many of my things that I love. It's got top handle, it's got crossbody. It's got a great zip, very, very subtle branding. I love brands, I do love brands, but we don't need to have the unnecessary amounts of branding. And, um, I think that they've achieved this beautifully. So next up, we have another little lunchbox style. We do call this my Chanel lunchbox. This was um, one of those times that I feel like it was just a, an interesting time where I went into London and I bought two bags. Only one of those bags I still have in my collection and it is this one because this is a bit of an iconic style. I think that Chanel did fantastic things with this bag. Um, the quality is a cut above a lot of their bags nowadays I would say and I think that I'm hoping that they're going to start taking that on board but I did have to pay a lot more um, than I paid for my classic flap I think my classic flap was around the sort of 3,000 mark at the time maybe it was like 2,300 I 
don't, I might be making that up, but I don't remember it being more than that. This bag was the same price as an Hermes bag. Um, and I don't wear it as much as I wear my Hermes bags, but this is a great summer bag. One day I really hope, do you know what I might do? I might see if I can have this leather painted because I cannot find a colour to match this. Maybe I'll see if I can get some shoes made at like Emmy London or something, get some shoes made in the same. It's like a an aged gold leather and I really, really, really like matching shoes. I know not everyone likes it, but I think it's a really classic look. Very, very heavy bag, very, very seasonally um, focused bag. And so you're not gonna get a lot of wear out of this throughout the winter months. Personally, I think it would look weird if you've got a wicker, wicker bag, but that's just me. But a very, very lovely design from Chanel and I, I bloody love it. It made the cut, it's not going anywhere. Now these ones are gonna shock you that they're even included, but they are part of my bag collection. And um, until the wicker market changes, I'm going to keep using these, but these are two bags from Amazon. And yes, personally, I think you can get great bags if you shop around. They're not perfect and there are things that I would change, but this is my little, I call this my, my Birkin, my Amazon Birkin, because this is what Jane Birkin wore a lot. Um, these like bucket picnic baskets. Ooh. And this is the best I've seen because it's fully lined. It's got a little pocket in there for change. This lid doesn't obviously um, come off because it's attached with lovely, lovely leather handles. And I think that this is probably one of the best Jane Birkin-esque uh, bucket bags that I've seen. And then this one is my little makeshift one. I'm gonna say this until the cows come home. This bag, I would love to see with leather uh, handles and some kind of better closure at the top, but this could be amazing. It could be amazing. And this is like my dream. Obviously it's my dream to have a bag that is similar to the Hermes um, Picnic. I don't know if I'd ever want the Picnic because I don't feel like I'd ever be able to wear it. It's worth so much, I'd be scared. I would like to see some more picnic ba basket bags in this sort of style because I think it's incredibly elegant. I think it looks really elevated. And this was like 13 quid from Amazon and then I've added a little tan strap so you can see how those colors will look really, really lovely together. It, it's not perfect, these little wire bits, at the very least, I wish the handle was just fixed like this because these wire bits, I tried covering them up, it's never really worked. It's included, it's in my bag collection now because this is all we've got left. <laughs> Next up, we are on to some pink numbers. This is my fluffy <laughs> Lulu Guinness uh, Blackberry Punnet bag. I wore this to Chelsea Flower Show last year and oh, I have never had so many compliments on a bag. I knew my audience when I went there and um, I know lots of people went on to buy this. It's so cute. And I have shoes that match the pink perfectly. And so it makes a really great spring summer bag for the garden lovers, for the nature lovers, for the blackberry lovers. I just oh, love this bag so much. It's so cute. There's like a little uh, ladybug sewn in and the beads are all like metal beads, not metal beads, but like, um, they're like hard. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. Such a cute little idea. Great for like spring summer weddings. Oh, love. Another icon, because I feel like I've had this bag for as long as I've had a YouTube channel almost. And this looks like I've had it for as uh, for that length of time. This bag has been battered and bruised. I remember there was one point when I got like pen on it and it seems to have been used so much that even the pen has worn off. Um, this is my Lady Dior Mini and it has the like chain strap to it. I don't actually know where that is at the moment. It's probably in the drawer. This is such a great colour. Like it's so good for evenings, for events, for dressing. It's such a great, a great colour. This is the best size in my humble opinion in the Lady Dior. I think it looks elegant. It looks just perfect and if honestly if I was in the market for more dual bags I would totally um, buy more in this size I think that a lot of their I used to buy a lot of their limited edition bags and they do their limited edition bags in the mediums and it was just never as good they were never as good as this size they never got worn as much and I think genuinely I would have kept my other lady Dior's if they had all been in this size so the original is the only one to stand the test of time and everything is just looking a little bit tatty, like 
these handles are worn, but I love things like that. I love that this bag is like, what, eight years old? Love it, love it, love it, love it. Now we are on to the polarizing handbag. These are my Hermes collection of handbags now. I understand why people find them so polariz polarizing because I found it uh, polarizing when I first heard about the process. I was like, oh, you mean I can't go in and buy it? That's like a club that I can't be a part of, but I'd so be a part of because I love handbags. But I genuinely feel like I've learned so many of these lessons through going through the process that I have with the Hermes buying process that I actually really respect it now. I think it's um, a, a great thing that they're they're doing. And whilst I'm not I'm not a particularly like schmoozy person, I have been very fortunate in the bags that I've managed to get um, both on the pre loved market, but also from store. And I actually really value what it is that they do. I think that it's still an independent um, family that owns it, which I think is great. Their standards haven't slipped, which we can't say that for Chanel, can we? Like they, they still have 18 karat gold hardware. Um, their bags are still handmade and the, the, the quality of the products are still the same. I've got bags that are 50 years old. I've got bags that aren't even a year old and the the quality is still at that level anyway first up we have a mini kelly this is the kelly 25 in epsom leather palladium hardware in classic black and this is a great one do i wish it had gold hardware yes i do am i glad that it sometimes it doesn't yes i am because this goes perfectly with like manolo blahnix and the cooler toned metal of the, the shoes on there um but i definitely cannot justify another one of these at the moment in black with gold hardware although i if there was a box leather one and it had gold hardware i would have to buy it this is um one of my favorite sizes of hermes bags it is ridiculous like it is ridiculous i call it my my ridiculous bag um, because it doesn't fit hardly anything in but the way that it looks with an outfit I really love I love a mini bag I, I, I bring the mini bag energy on my frame as well mini bags always look very proportionate I think so I love them I love them especially in the winter months this goes with a lot of my all black outfits which I love to wear at uh, especially the the sort of pre-Christmas time of year sparkles look great with this bag this bag was purchased pre-loved from Luxury Promise and um, I did that because they're so difficult to get. Um, I haven't got a mini Kelly on my quota bag from an S from my SA yet. So, and I don't actually think I've ever put one on, which is a bit silly. I just always convinced myself that I would never get one. But anyway, the 25s, they seem to come through for me, but yeah. Anyway, so this is my, my first mini Kelly was this one. Next up is my first vintage Kelly. So this is a Kelly 32 in Rouge H with gold hardware. And this bag is from 1975, 1973, I can't remember now. And this was purchased from Parisian Suite. And I purchased this for, I think it was about five or six thousand pounds, which is much cheaper than a Chanel bag nowadays and actually cheaper than you would obviously pay for brand new. Um, it's because this is old. I think this has also been sent to the Hermes Spa as well. So it's had a lot of love and TLC given to it. For me personally, I didn't want a bag that looked new. I think there is something so chic about a battered and bruised Hermes bag like usually it doesn't look like this okay um, I do store it with a cushion in it usually but having these bags open just hanging like this when they are battered like there's cracks in the leather like there's scratches look at that I just I love it I absolutely love it and I add to it and I, I, I throw this bag around and I love it and it's just gorgeous and I think it's got a real personality. The color itself is beautiful in the box leather. Box leather for me um, is just a cut above. Anything box leather, I'm like, oh my God, I just can't cope. If you can find somewhere that's very, very reputable to get bags, I would always suggest getting a vintage one. There's places like Cellier, there's places like Luxury Promise, there's Vestia Collective, there's eBay, lots of places that are 
guaranteeing authenticity of the product so you can buy with a lot more confidence um, and it's something that I am incredibly passionate about as well so trust me if you're looking at me thinking Lydia this is the year I'm getting a, a, an Hermes and I'm not going to go through the process of it, doing it in store get yourself a vintage bag like the black box leather vintage bags that are available at the moment oh my god and I know that you all send me the green box ones that you see and I just ignore them because you are a bunch of enablers and I won't have you do it to me and I'm, I have to be very selective with these things okay I have to be because I um I want to keep my collection small I want to keep it edited and beautiful and um so I'm very very picky continuing on the red theme and um showing you the sort of difference between this bag and the last bag this is my newest Hermes bag this is my um Rouge H25 Birkin in Epsom leather? I'm not very good with these things anymore. I don't really care. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't really care. I just like what I like and reeling off the knowledge, I don't really care. But um, it's got the gold hardware. 25 is 110% my favorite favorite size in the Birkin it suits me perfectly like the size wise it suits me perfectly and you'll be able to see when I show you the 35 that I have um that it's a bit big but that's more of like my hold all this was my most recent bag this was um funny story I think I told you about this but this was actually Ali's wish that came in and um Ali he's so funny he does make me laugh he got so excited that he walked in and he just said how about you porty do you want a rouge h25 i was like what are you saying like what are you talking about and uh he was like i've just got my wish and it was two days before my evergreen um book event and so he picked up the same day and i got to open it that day so it's sort of like a bit of a a bit of a moment this feels very different to my vintage bag which i love because the color is completely different this has a sort of deeper um almost like i don't even know how to say it it's kind of like a knocked back version and i i've worn this so so much for me this is 110 percent like an autumn winter bag and i am just in love with this color so much this is like that heritage Hermes color i'm very selective with my colors you're never going to see me with a bright pop of pink you're never going to see me with a bright pop of green you're always going to see me with those colors that are intrinsically linked in the Hermes heritage and this is one of them rouge h is oh just Stunning, stunning. Now I obviously have another 25 Birkin um, in the Retourne, which Retourne is my favorite. I also have a Cellier, um, but the tan Retourne that I have is in storage along with my Mini Kelly, but let's talk about my Retourne uh, 25. So I've got my 25 Birkin in tan leather with gold hard hardware. They call the tan leather gold. Um, and it's 25 Epsom leather. It goes with whites, it goes with blues, it goes with all of those like classic colors so nicely. And for me, it's just the most perfect neutral bag, perfect classic Hermes color, and it's just iconic. So um, of course I had to include that one because um, it's it's a fave. Birkin 25, I can't go wrong. Sorry, I've been saying Epsom leather. They are definitely Togo leather, and it's my Mini Kellys that are Epsom leather. So I've got the Epsom um, Mini Kelly in gold with gold hardware. It's the 20 size. That is also in storage, and um, it's one of that's one of those like holy grail bags that you don't really see very often nowadays because they are so difficult to get hold of. It's my dream summer bag. It goes so beautifully with summer white dresses it always just looks beautifully classic it's very like old money vibes um, in that color great bag so those two are in stores so sadly I can't show you them but hopefully the pictures will have done them justice great bags love them I bought the um, 25 Birkin in store and then I bought my mini Kelly uh, pre-loved from Luxury Promise going in hot with another vintage bag purchase and this one I need to just I need to wear it more I need to wear it more so this is my 35 canvas toile Birkin with I think it's Courchevel leather in the gold with gold hardware so this is 35 this is 
such a good size bag. This is like my travel bag usually. Now I want this to supple up a little bit more because this has had a nice trip to the Hermes Spa and um, it is in perfect, perfect condition but it does need, just I need it to look a little bit battered and bruised. It looks in such good nick, but I want it to be a little bit more slouchy. This was purchased from Parisian Suite. I told him I wanted it. Um, I told him I was looking for it and he found it and I was like, damn you. <laughs> when he found it, I was like, no, but was very, very happy. And great as like a gym bag as well, but also I love it when I'm like traveling and I can have this bag and then my 25 Birkin or my mini Kelly and they just complement each other so beautifully. This is also um, just, it's just lovely. I love it as a bag, it's gorgeous. I, I feel like I'm gushing over it, but I do, I just love it. Love, love, love. And the final countdown. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This is looking a little bit scraggly because it's been in my suitcase. This is my 25 Birkin in Madame leather. So something a little bit different, a much finer grain on the leather. Cellier Birkin with gold hardware. Um, it, I've got to be honest, I don't like Cellier Birkins. I love this one and I think the black is very, very classic. It looks very elegant, um, but I just love the slouchiness of a Retourne Birkin. It feels effortless. It feels more in line with how I enjoy my Birkins and en enjoy my Hermes bags, which is a way that is more loved and used and I want them to look like they've been loved and this always just looks blooming perfect which isn't something usually to be mad about but it is good and it also I would say that the Celio Birkins feel a bit bigger I always feel like my Retourne Birkins feel a bit smaller um, and easier to to wear however I'm still very very happy with this the bag this was from Luxury Promise it's, it's just looks so gorgeous so so like chic and gives them more of like a business feel to it which I love so um, that is the final item in my bag collection. I love handbags and you know that about me, you know that I love handbags. And I really enjoy them and this has been such a weird journey that I've been on to be such a handbag lover and a lot of my first videos that went viral were based around handbags and I really kind of, I remember, I can't remember who it was, but it, there was some um, YouTubers that, that are some other YouTubers that really kind of helped with my growth in the early days because they were like your handbag videos are my guilty pleasures and so to now be here with a very nicely edited collection of 15 bags um, it's different and it's very different when a new bag launches and I get that very familiar pang of like oh because I'm I'm a marketer's dream, you know, I love these things already, so of course I want the new it bag. And then I have to take a step back and I have to really look at the situation and be like, no, you are in recovery for your handbag addiction and you don't need any more. So at the moment I've been sitting, and you'll know I would have mentioned this about six months ago, I've been sitting with um, the next bag that I would want to buy for about six months. I've wanted a white, like an off-white ivory coloured bag for a while while now. I think it will add a lot to my more event dressing time. So when I'm going to things like Cheltenham and I want to wear colour but I don't want to go and buy a bag unnecessarily, I think having that more neutral tone with some neutral shoes will work really well. But again, I've been sitting with it. It's not something I'm going to rush out to purchase. I have a wish in with Hermes for a 28, uh, for a 25 Birkin, but if that comes in or not, I, I can't say. I have also um, in my basket at the moment, the Judy bag from Lorna. I think that Lorna is going to be a brand that is really exciting over the next year. I'm really intrigued to see what's gonna be happening with them and especially with the Judy bag, because I think, I think it could go wild um, as long as they sort of um, play things right but that is my next bag purchase I would say. For me it is the Hermes of England although you don't have to go through the buying process etc etc it is it has that same history that same um, that same luxury and element of luxury to it they also have the 
um, gold gold hardware, etc, etc. I know not everyone enjoys sit down videos, but I had to sit down for it because we were going to be talking a fair amount in depth. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I, I want to sit down. Ali has just got home, so I'm gonna wrap this up. However, I say wrap this up, I have chatted to you for such a long time. I was about to get into the nitty gritty of um, my boot storage, and I thought I could actually give you a quick rundown of what I do with um, my bags when I store them. Um, and that's all of my bags, not just the expensive ones. If I've worn something now, I do. Now that I've got this little brush, my um, Christmas present from Ali, this brush, I just, give them a bit of a dust down. I will also um, wipe them over if need be because I often get little foundation marks. So I always have this little pot. I know I showed it in my other video, but I always have this little pot. This is available on Amazon. You just fill it with your wipes of choice. I have water wipes because I think they sound gentle. I'm sure they're not, but um, I use these so much to just give everything a bit of a once over when it comes to cleaning. So that's boots, uh, bags, I think just giving everything a wipe. Bags go everywhere with you. And especially handles. I'm always so grossed out by my handles. And whilst I say that I really like things to look battered and used, I still don't want things to be ruined any quicker, if that makes sense. It's like a love-hate relationship. So I want to know that I've still taken the utmost care with things, but used them lovingly. So just keeping things clean, stored well. So I'll give them a, a brush over. Some people might think that this is a bit much, but like I said, I like to use my things well and enjoy them and take care of them. And this is all part of that process. Ali's processes with his boots and things like that, it really inspired me and now I'm taking a lot more care of things like this. So once it is clean, once it is wiped down um, and once it is dry, you can obviously brush it over with this brush just to get any bits and pieces off. To store my um, Hermes bags, because of the popularity of Hermes bags and because of how much people take uh, pride in them, there are a number of places that you can buy little bag pads. This is from Bag Pad London. I got this on Amazon. I bought all of the different sizes for my bag. So you just pop these in when storing them, then pop them into their dust bag. I keep my Hermes bags out of sunlight. I keep them out of anything like too hot. You get the right size. You pop it in with an Hermes bag. You want to be careful that it doesn't get caught on the internal pockets because they are well designed so that they aren't too tight but it does mean that when you're putting things in you have to be careful that is my little bag uh, care once over there is probably more that you can do in a more intensive way but this is just my general easy to do things if i was to have anything like a mark on things i'd probably get a professional to look at it but for the most part that works really well i will link my brush and also my little box of wipes and obviously i use those for my shoes as well which leads me on to my next point. These are a pair of the mid heel Reginas. So I have a high heeled pair of Reginas in the black and then I have a mid heel pair in the mahogany and a flat pair, which I am wearing at the moment, in the mahogany. The mahogany is so good. Um, and actually, I've obviously had these before I've started storing them properly, however, what I do use are these. These are wooden boot inserts. Again, I got them from Amazon. These are great because they've got this little springy handle that I pop in. This helps with keeping the shape of the boot um, and preserving the leather. All of my favorite boots has those in. I would love proper wooden ones like you know like how they would just store them in the old days you know how i've got the vintage riding boots downstairs and they've got them in but i you need to have those made specifically for your feet and i would never be able to afford the exact ones multiple times for all of my boots that i have so um but what i would do is when i get home i get a baby wipe and i give it a quick wipe over just to remove any marks because actually as I showed in my video when I was cleaning my boots there was some salts on my flat uh, Regina's and I thought they wouldn't come out and yet the moment that I wiped it over with the baby wipe the wet wipe they came out beautifully so 
give that a wipe over all over like so paying close attention to the sole because I feel like a sole really does give the game away if you haven't been taking care of your boots so getting all of the little muddy bits from around the sole and then the same on the other boot there, as you can see they are just drying out now and then as you've seen me do many times before without wanting to be too repetitive we just give them a good polish up as you can see that shine is just popping a little bit on there eh, voila um, those are just a few little bits that I've been meaning to pop into a video with you and I'm just playing around with things having fun with my channel a little bit more and making making the content that I think is useful but also enjoyable for me to make as well so I hope that you found this interesting and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below I didn't use the mic I didn't want it to sound too formal but that's not gonna say I'm not gonna use the mic in the future because I really like it I think I just maybe need to tweak the sound a little bit more but um, yes thank you so much for watching I will see you in my next one bye